For more insight onto the impact the elections on relations between the U.S. and China, we're joined by Ross Feingold, Senior Advisor at D.C. International Advisory, and Dan McClory, President and Head of China for investment firm Baustead & Company. Thanks for joining us, gentlemen. Thank you, Michelle. So Trump was uh, certainly, uh, Trump was really strong on the, on the China bashing during his uh, campaign. And, and anti-China talk is a common theme in U.S. presidential elections. Before taking office, Bill Clinton rallied against what he called the butchers of Beijing. However, under his administration, he ushered China into the World Trade Organization. George W. Bush called China a strategic competitor, and then he embraced China as an ally in his war on terror. Dan, we'll start with you. Do you think any of this talk actually means anything now that he's won? I really don't. I think it's just a lot of positioning to set the table for what are going to be some pretty intense negotiations. Um, I think we can take a lot of this rhetoric that we heard from both sides, quite frankly. From Hillary, there was a bit of rhetoric, and certainly from Trump. Um, and this is all setting the stage for the eventual coming together on, on many bilateral issues that the U.S. and China are going to have to face. But I wouldn't read too much into the pre-election run-up. You already saw somewhat of a softening in Trump's tone last night during what was effectively his acceptance speech. Ross, some say that relations between China and the U.S. have already been negatively impacted just in the run-up to this. What do you think? Well, I'm, I'm going to say that... Um, well, we see that every we, presidential cycle, because... Uh, let's uh, uh, give uh, Ross sorry, a chance. I was going to say, we see this every presidential election cycle, where there, there, there is an element of China bashing every four years during the U.S. presidential cycle, whether it's from the Democrat side or the Republican side. So you know, it's no surprise that either candidate, Hil Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump, w would say negative things about China. It's an easy target. Uh, but you know, the fact that Trump was identifying Chinese imports into the United States is a concern. Obviously, this is something that uh, found a, 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 a big audience with the voters and, and one of the fa many factors that helped propel him to victory yesterday. Ross, you mentioned those imports, and China and the U.S. are each other's biggest trade partners. Trump threatened to slap an across-the-board 45 percent tariff on Chinese imports. If he does that, what do you expect, Ross? Well, the, the interesting thing in, in this discussion about uh, the trade relationship between China and the United States is, is it's, the focus has been on the Chinese products that come into the United States. And, and as some of your previous guests were discussing, uh, there's also an element of the ability of U.S. companies to operate in China. So I, I think it's very important to monitor, does, does Donald Trump and his administration pick up that side of the relationship as far as market access, reducing regulation, uh, and improving the business environment for U.S. companies? in China, or is the focus only going to be on, on the side of, of, of the imports that come into the United States and increasing tariffs? So it, it's, it's something that deserves monitoring simply because all the focus has, has been on the products that come into the United States rather than the operating environment in China for U.S. companies. Dan, in the event that this does happen and some tariffs are imposed on Chinese goods, what impact would that have on U.S. businesses there? I think that's a great question, and, and, and Ross really led into that with, you know, there's going to be some form of counterpunch or retaliation, and it's most likely going to benefit some of the non-U.S. competitors. Uh, names that come to mind are companies like uh, Airbus, for example. Um, Volkswagen might be another one. And, you know, Samsung. Uh, if something happens with a tariff, that could affect Apple in some way. So this is not going to go unnoticed and unresponded to. That we know for sure. And isn't it ironic, Michelle, that now we're looking at the U.S. <coughs> as having some form of country risk? We normally ascribe that to emerging markets or perhaps even China from time to time. But now the U.S., because of uncertainty and really tension, uh, is coming to the fore. Well, Dan, in terms of what we can expect or expect the unexpected, that seems to be the, the Trump legacy here from what we've established so far. He has promised to call China a currency manipulator on his very first day in office. Dan, do you think he'll go through with that? Uh, I really don't. And uh, so far, it's not working because the yuan strengthened. And based on the fact that there probably won't be a Fed rate increase uh, next month, 
uh, I think you're going to actually see an assist to China in that it's going to stem some of the capital outflows that have been occurring. Uh, but I would be extremely surprised if his opening salvo uh, is to brand China a currency manipulator. And it was no accident that uh, Max Bacchus, the U.S. ambassador to China, was really the first and the only ambassador to speak after Trump's election uh, to really reassure everyone that uh, there's going to be some calmness of approach. Well, Ross, was that reassurance uh, taken by the markets? Because the Shanghai Composite was down 0.6 percent, down, but that is not a significant decline. What does that tell us? Well, we saw far greater declines, uh, for example, initially well, it, with it, Brexit. It, Ross. Well, cl clearly there, there is concern, and, and uh, the large Chinese companies uh, and the public that trades their, their shares uh, are, are probably large enough to absorb the shock from uh, Trump's election and absorb the surprise from, from yesterday's result. Uh, but you know, we need to monitor this going forward in the coming days. I would still expect there to be some volatility as people monitor and, be, and, and see whether or not Trump will take action, as you were discussing with the declaring China a currency manipulator. The, the risk that he does that might be low, but it's still out there, and it will affect Chinese companies. So I, I think it's not just a question of what happened yesterday and how markets reacted in this part of the world. It's really something that is going to be volatile in the coming weeks. Well, Dan, I want to get your thoughts on this because Trump has been very vocal against the TPP. China is right. not a part of that trade agreement. If he does, in fact, scrap that, what does that mean for China? Well, I don't think a whole lot, really. Uh, and the TPP is, is definitely toast, as uh, the Wall Street Journal, I think, said uh, so appropriately uh, earlier this morning. <laughs> um, that is, um, I, I think it will have a negligible effect. I think the non-inclusion uh, of China in that whole arrangement was uh, perhaps uh, an error or an attempt to go in a different direction. Uh, but I really don't see an impact of that. It's been somewhat known, whether it was through the opposition in the Senate, uh, for that, and really neither of the candidates being firmly behind it, that this just was not going to come to pass. Ross, I'm going to give you the last word here. Do you think that there is going to be any major significant change between U.S.-China relations in the first three months of this presidency? It really depends on not just Mr. Trump or President-elect Trump, but also who his team is and what are their views, not just in the trade relationship, but in the security relationship and other issues that are on the bilateral agenda. So there's still a lot of unknown, but I think we should not just look at President-elect Trump, but we have to look at who his team will be as well. All right. All of that still to be established. Thank you so much. Ross Feingold, senior advisor at the D.C. International Advisory and Dan McClory, president and head of China for Bowstead and Company. Thanks for joining us, gentlemen.